Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24 on France 24. I'm James Creedon. Coming up on this week's show, we'll introduce you to Google's new AI phone calling system called Duplex. Using your phone, Duplex can perfectly mimic a human voice and even make reservations on your behalf. And food prepared by and even served by bots. We'll travel to San Francisco where robots are increasingly being used in restaurants. Thanks for watching. Now, this week's big tech news was the announcement by Google of its new AI assistant that can mimic a human voice. It triggered both wonder and worry about the startling uh, progress in the field of artificial intelligence. Dan and Jay Cattlecar is here, surrounded by gadgets, <laughs> uh, to discuss that a little bit more uh, uh, with us. Um, let's talk about the wonder aspect of uh, this first, Dan and Jay. What's the technology at the core of duplex AI? Duplex AI uses automatic speech recognition and, of course, deep learning, which consists of training multi-layered neuron networks with a set of uh, data. Now, in this case, this particular neuron network is called the recurrent neuron network, mm -hmm. and it was trained with a set of anonymized um, uh, phone call conversation data. And that's how it was able to interpret these conversations and respond accordingly. Now, this network is also very peculiar. The recurrent neural network, as it is called, as you can see, there's the word recurrent in it. So there's a loop involved in this network. So it, it, is, it is a complex network, but it also performs, uh, or it is used rather for complex applications like speech recognition. Now, what it does is the, uh, essentially the computations derived from earlier inputs they are fed back into the network. So this creates a sort of memory in the network, and that's how it's able to perform complex So at tasks. a very basic level, it functions a little bit like a human memory bank. We're having a conversation. You're using vocabulary that I might be able to interpret in context. Later, exactly. Right. Um, so what, what kind of tasks can it carry out, uh, this AI phone system? Well, right now, it has a very uh, limited domain. So d this demonstration, for example, can perform three tasks. One is to book tables at restaurants. Second is to schedule haircuts. And third is to, uh, to know the, the holiday hours of businesses. We've probably piqued curiosity enough. Let's take a listen to how it might work, how it will work. How oh, happy can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. And that was at the uh, Google I.O. conference uh, uh, very uh, recently. Now, Dan and Jay, I have to say, what I find a bit freaky about that is it sounds a little bit too human for my taste. I'd prefer if it sounded like a robot, because <laughs> then I know I'm talking to a robot. So uh, what are the worries? Do we want to talk about the worries uh, that, that this could represent? Well, I think you hinted at it. First yeah. of all, if you get, imagine a scenario, if you are running a restaurant and you get a phone call and you don't know that you're talking to an AI bot, so this poses an ethical question, but according to latest reports, apparently Google is now going to integrate this uh, disclaimer. There's mm. going to be a disclaimer built in in the system so that uh, the listener knows that he is conversing with an AI bot and not with a human. Isn't so that is an important step. Uh, secondly, very, very, very nice of them <laughs> to let uh, us know. Secondly, as this technology grows, as perhaps the vocabulary, the range of vocabulary of the system grows, 
maybe there is a scope for some mischief and misuse. Maybe it could be used to spread uh, false news and it can also be used for frauds, right. like uh, soliciting... Uh, it's the general concern, I guess, with artificial... It's the general concern yeah. with artificial intelligence that it could become somewhat autonomous and have uh, less than human or noble intent behind it. We, we, we don't uh, know exactly. In any case, it's not, Google is not the only one betting big on artificial intelligence, uh, Dan and Jay. Microsoft has also demonstrated its latest AI offering, which was in the form of a cone. That's right. Uh, during the Microsoft Build conference, the company demonstrated how the meetings of the future will take place. Now, at the heart of it, as you mentioned, is this conical uh, device that integrates many things. It has, first of all, Cortana speech recognition system. It also has Skype transcription and translation system. And it has a 360-degree camera that can identify all the participants in the meeting. So why is it so useful? First of all, as the meeting starts, you don't need to physically transcribe the, whatever is being said. It can be done automatically in real time, similar with translation. And this, and the, this particular cone or the device can identify people involved in the meeting as well. Uh, on top of that, it can also uh, take salient notes. Mm. So anyone who comes late in the meeting can just have, uh, can know what's gone and what has happened mm -hmm. in the meeting so far at a glance. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is very important. So these are some of the features uh, that has been incorporated in, uh, in this system. And of course, this is a demo. It's a demo version. So maybe the final product will be, will be even more refined. Now, uh, just to prove that AI and robots are seeping into every aspect of life, let's turn our sights to certain restaurants in San Francisco where robots are being used to prepare food and serve customers. Now, while it's not service with a smile and where they might lack a bit of flair in the kitchen, these robots do get the job done without any drama. Take a look at this report. Not a morning person? not ready for a chit chat until you've woken up properly and stopped off at a cafe, well, this might be the place for you. Here, all the orders are carried out by robots that take care of everything from making the coffee to serving it and even customer relations. There's not a long line like there usually is at Starbucks and I can order on my app and while I'm walking over here, the coffee's being made. Oh, it's quick, it's efficient. But the robot doesn't work alone here. There are also two human employees. We're actually able to do a little bit more with customers. Uh, we can lead um, tastings and with our aroma cart, customers can get a more in-depth experience of where our beans come from. 13% of restaurant owners now say they're ready to use automated systems. Here in San Francisco, that's already becoming a reality with some establishments using robots to make pizza, hamburgers, and even to prepare salads. This machine is a prototype and the company behind it have already received four million euros in investments. So here is a salad made by Sally. It looks quite nice. Uh, you see here with Sally, uh, we still need our chefs. Prices for robots have come down quite dramatically in the last few years. Now the prices are at the level where they make sense for food service. It's also very hard to get labor food workers uh, in many parts of the country. The cost, 28,000 euros. Just one of the robots that could lead to 54% of jobs becoming automated. Uh, you could, for example, I don't know, put a, a tax on the acquisition of a robot, which would make it less attractive to fire people. The problem, I think, in the future will be more and more people will be laid off because robots are cheaper. This international young startup company is already preparing the fourth generation of its delivery robot. Once you've ordered your meal, the small vehicle takes to the streets with its 10 cameras and two GPS receivers and making sure to avoid passers-by. I'm going to take my job. You click on the button and that opens the lid. The average delivery time is 45 minutes. With our service, the average delivery time is 27 minutes, and we're aiming for a cost of $1 for consumers. Already a very competitive sector, such delivery services have now been banned in a number of American cities for security reasons. Maybe being a robot isn't so convenient after all. I don't know about you, Dan and Jay, but I prefer my food prepared by humans where possible. Uh, I don't mind as long as there's food, I don't care where it comes from. <laughs> okay, can't sprinkle parsley though. Anyway, uh, it's time now for this week's Test 24.
So this week we're going to take a look at two sound systems. The first one is a sound system that you craft yourself, developed by a French company called? Craft and Sound. Great. Sounds logical, right? Yes. Yeah. How does it work? Well, there's a wood element to it. So mm. essentially you uh, create this box. Uh, you can order these wooden panels or you can, have your, you can buy your own wooden panels mm. and uh, create these grooves. And then you just assemble all these parts. You get a list of instructions on how that assembly is supposed to be. And on top of that, you have these electronic components, uh, like you have this box that has Bluetooth and mm -hmm. amplifier. Here you have two speakers, uh, 30 right. watt RMS each. Right. And in the future, the company, uh, Craft & Sound, uh, which is a Parisian startup, it aims to integrate uh, Raspberry Wi-Fi uh, circuit board. So you'll also have a Wi-Fi option along with Bluetooth. And then they'll also have this digital con uh, converter mm -hmm. to boost sound. So this is the so first it's, it's like IKEA meets uh, hipster sound system. Absolutely. And the and second you, sound system yes. is also by a uh, Parisian startup. Mm -hmm. uh, the startup is called the Concrete Family. Yes. And as the name suggests, this is a block of concrete, which right. has been inspired from, as you said, the... the P Parisian pavement stones, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, this is a unique concrete. It's not the traditional concrete. It's a uh, high-performance mm. uh, fiber concrete. Mm -hmm. So it enables uh, the concrete to be... Yeah. You can have thinner concrete. So right now, this uh, the diameter is around 10 mm, while the traditional concrete, the minimum diameter is supposed to be 5 centimeter. And it is quite heavy, and it's, it does really evoke Yeah, uh, 1.3 kilograms. Right. And the reason why they use concrete is because apparently uh, acoustics, they perform better Sharper if the surrounding, sounds. yeah, exactly, right. if the surrounding medium is uh, harder. And, and for, that's, that's the idea. For those who are aware of the Paris streetscape, this really is what a Paris paving stone looks like. And they were being thrown around the place in, <laughs> in May 1968. 1968, yeah. indeed. Shall so we listen to it? A revolutionary yeah. quality <laughs> to it, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, listen to this 20 watt RMS capacity speaker. Nice. That's quite loud. And then, okay. of course, we have the bigger it, do it does what it says on the tin, <laughs> or on the concrete. Yeah. Right, and now we're going to listen to the first speaker. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Very nice. All right, thanks, John and Jay. It's, they look like perfect gifts for, <laughs> for men who still want to be children, or women, for that matter. <laughs> uh, that's all for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.